Hello everyone and I hope you're doing extremely well. Today we're in the F86 F Sabre and we're looking at MPC bombing. It's something I've been wanting to do for a couple of years but I never got round to it. I knew it was going to be complicated and difficult but well, I didn't know it was going to be this complicated and difficult but uh, so we're going to give it a try today and show how to do it. First thing to say is if, that if you try this and follow the instructions in the flight manual, it just doesn't seem to work. Either there's a problem with the F-86 and DCS, which is unlikely, or there's a misprint in the flight manual, which I think is the problem. So I'll, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you my modified method. And as I go through, I'll show you what the flight manual says. And then hopefully you'll agree that there probably is a problem in, in the flight manual. So the MPC is a manual aiming system for the F-86 to drop bombs in a dive and it's centered around safety so that we can drop our bombs accurately on a target with guidance from a pipper with information that we're going to input into the system. And as well as uh, getting the bombs on target, it's going to give a safe pull away cue so that we can pull away uh, with a 5G pull away and not endanger ourselves from the blast. And to understand why this system was invented, we have to think about back to the, the time that this jet was in service. In the very early 50s, it was essentially before the time of computing. And back in these days, getting a bomb on target and not killing yourself was an absolute art form. You try doing it in a Spitfire, get a bomb on target and not put yourself in extreme danger. It's bloody hard to do. So they wanted to make it as easy as they can for the pilot. Now, in a more modern jet, go and take an A10C out or a Harrier or whatever. It's got fully computed CCIP for this. It gives you constantly calculated uh, input and output on the HUD to show you where to drop your bombs and where to pull away to safety. And back in these days, we didn't have those computers, so it all has to be done by these charts and um, a mixture of charts and following exact orders and skill. So let's look at the controls we're going to be using. We're going to be using our normal armament pedestal. This thing is called the armament panel. So we'll look at that. We're going to be using our barometric altimeter here. And we have to make sure that it's zero. It's QFE is set. And we're currently at 29.92. So that is accurate. We have to, we're going to be using our artificial horizon here. And we're going to make sure that that is uncaged and zeroed. And it is. We're going to be using our A4 gun sight gyro here, uh, here, which is going to have to be uncaged, and it is already uncaged at the moment, as you can see, so that's something we need. We're going to be looking at our bombing altimeter here. This is the primary problem with the MPC, as you'll see sh uh, shortly. And we're going to be looking at our MPC control panel here, and that should do us for today. Actually releasing the bombs is going to be the usual weapon release let's look at what we're going to bomb we've got a target about uh, 10 miles i think yeah about 10 miles in front of us and this system compensates for the altitude of the target so it tells you tells us when to drop our bombs at what steepness of dive at what speed and it's all relative to a target's altitude because the target is very rarely going to actually be at sea level. So in this case, to make things easy, I've put them well, pretty much bang on 3,000 feet, you can see, just to make the maths easy. So back into the cockpit, let's start getting ourselves set up. And what we're going to do is put it on active pause just um, so that we can take our time. Sorry about the noise, it does that. Uh, we want to have manual release set here, done. We want to have our fuse set, either uh, nose and tail or, no or tail only. I put nose and tail on. Our demolition bombs, we're going to set to all with right click. We've got to have this chap here, which is our um, our gun missile selector switch, which controls our sight here. It's going to go to sight, camera, and radar. This chap down here, I'm just going to get my track AR down here, needs to be set to gun. The variable sight selector unit needs to be set to gun, uh, which it is by standard default, I believe. Next, we need to turn our MPC system on. So normal here means just a normal aiming sight. Uh, turning this bomb turns on the MPC system and this will adjust this guy, this reticle. We'll turn that on there. We can also adjust our, our reticle brightness if we want. Make it as bright as we possibly can. Next, we have to determine our attack profile. Let's just see uh, where are we at the moment. We're about 10 miles away and we're at 16,000 feet okay so what we're going to do is we can flip through the pages of this chart with left mouse and right mouse so left mouse left mouse left mouse right mouse right mouse right mouse 
And what, what we're looking here is a relevant altitude above target. Note altitude above target, not altitude above sea level. 15,000 is our most relevant, so we're going to stick with that. Next, we need to choose our steepness of dive, and this is going to be, um, this is going to control our steepness of dive. Not automatically, we have to do it manually. To do that, we've got the artificial horizon, and we've got the double check on the canopy here. That's what this is for. Uh, I mean, doing these types of dives in an aircraft like this without a HUD is incredibly difficult, uh, so we're going to make it as easy as we can. I'll say about 40 should be attainable. So we've got to get that bang on the money there. I think that's 40. I'm doing this with mouse scroll wheel backwards and forwards. So 40 degree. And then what we're going to do is read off 40 degrees what it says here in hundreds of feet. And that is our drop, release and pull up altitude. Uh, so that is near as damn it, 3,500 feet. Uh, so because it's hundreds of feet. So 3,500 feet above the target. Okay. If we were at uh, 80 degrees, then it would be 7,000 feet above target. Next, we adjust our bombing altimeter. <clears throat> this is where it gets a little bit funky. So here is our current altitude in terms of air pressure. It will marry up with the barometric altimeter here, about 16, just over 16,000 feet. And you can see just over 16,000 feet here. So this needle here, we can't adjust. We can adjust this needle here and a little yellow needle down here. So this needle that we can adjust is our drop altitude. Now, I'm going to set it as it says in the manual. It says to set it exactly what it says in here, 3,500 feet. And you'll see where the problems start shortly. Okay. Now, I'm going to adjust our target altitude above sea level. And that is near as damn it, 3,000 feet. About that there. So that that little uh, golden needle is where our target is. This needle here is where we drop our bombs. This needle here is our actual altitude. So if we were, we were going to go into a dive, then the idea is we have to drop our bombs when this white needle coincides exactly with this white needle. Well, no prizes for seeing what the problem is here. That literally we would be dropping our bombs 50 feet above the uh, above the terrain, and it obviously wouldn't work. So I'm pretty sure what the manual says is wrong in that respect. And it makes it very clear that this is how you should set it. What I think you're supposed to do is set this needle here, the 3,500 feet here, to a calculated distance above the target altitude. So the target altitude is 3,000 feet. You would have to get that from, in real life, from some kind of intelligence. But we can just go to the F10 map here. And we're going to set it to 3,000 plus 3,500, which is going to be... Um, and get my brain working 6500 that looks a little better so now when our altitude needle here gets down to our bomb release altitude here is when we drop our bomb and what I think it should be is the distance between this needle here and this needle here should be 3500 which is one two three three and a half three thousand five hundred so that completely disagrees with the flight manual but correct me if I'm wrong I believe that is how the system should actually work either that or this needle here should affect this needle here. It should offset this needle here upwards, but it doesn't. So it could possibly be that this gauge is broken, but there you go. Now, there's a little more to it than that. The... Oh, I was about to say computer. There is no computer in this. Um, the, the system, should we say, has to know exactly, or has to control, not only your steepness of dive, but also your speed. Uh, this system is based around kind of basic average physics it's saying that I'm gonna to have to enter my dive remember this is dive only this is if you like prehistoric CCIP um, bombing we're gonna enter it at 288 knots KIAS okay um, and that's gonna be measured by this here is KIAS so when we enter our dive we've got to be at 288 also when we enter our dive we've got to be Move, traveling perfectly level and be trimmed level also when we enter our dive our air brakes have to be out and our throttle has to be down to zero so all of those things have to be in place for this system to be accurate as well as that we have to go into a half roll dive we can't just kind of uh, mooch the nose over that would be much nicer and much much easier if we could do that but we have to go into a half roll dive 
Uh, now that means that takes a lot of skill. It means you have to position the bad guy, the known target, um, in a position where a 40 degree dive is going to marry up perfectly with a half roll dive and be able to get the target on our nose and that's where the skill comes in I don't know how to do that you know I'm not a proper pilot obviously that's way beyond me I like my CCIP and my A10C so that's something you have to know how to do so um, that's just something you have to train for we'll just do the best that we can so we're just gonna quickly do our final checks because this take I've spent literally four hours today trying to get this to work uh, everything's there good everything there's good we're uncaged there. Be careful of heavily violent manoeuvres where this thing's uncaged. I mean, we're doing a half roll dive, so we can't avoid it, but um, it's just a general thing that we're only going to uncage this at the last minute, essentially, before the dive. Uh, by turning this knob, by the way, if I didn't say earlier, it changes the deflection, the depression of this guy here in mils. And you can go all the way down to 174 mils of depression, I believe. Okay, so we've got to start getting ourselves in parameters next. We're going to turn the pause off. We're going to look for our... There it is, I see it. So we're going to have to do the skill bit now, which is where I start to struggle. So turn off here about 20 degrees to the left. Right, we've got to get parameters. So we've got to get to uh, 15,000 feet above target, which is 18,000 feet. ASL corrected here. So 18,000 feet here, 288 knots and trim level. So let's get that done. And we have to do it all in time before we reach our target as well. Uh, so we've got a long way to climb. So what we can do is kind of circle around the target with about a three mile spacing, something like that for 40 degrees. A 40 degree dive. <clears throat> so just getting a feel for the trim now, 17 and a half thousand. Check the target. It's looking okay. Start to level out now. That is a just creeping on 80,000, bit of trim up. Still trying to get the speed up to 290 knots. Uh, get, still getting the trim under control. That there is pretty much it. We're 288 knots. We're 18,000 exactly. And we're a bit of a funny angle, but I think we can make that work. I think that must be about three miles. So a 40 degree dive, we can, we can do. We have to be fairly aggressive, which is going to upset the gyro a bit and make it hard. But there you go. So I'll put my controls up there. Roll my sleeves up. Unpause, off throttle, air brake on, turn in, half roll. That's not too bad actually. Now getting this bit lined up is incredibly difficult. Retrim, pause. Bit of talking time now, so we're going to be off throttle all the way here. Air brakes are going to stay on all the time. The task now is to keep this guy here on the target and get to 40 degrees uh, dive here. Now doing both of those things is of course impossible. Something's got to give. So what we're going to do is aim this reticle above the target because we can see we're under degrees. I misjudged this because I don't have any skill. Uh, I misjudged this. So this is about 30 degrees. So what we're going to do is aim our aircraft above this now to compensate and then bring the pipper back down on the target so that we'll be at 40 degrees drop when that needle meets that needle there. So the uh, instruments at this point are him, 40 degrees, him, that needle will be that needle, and we've got a backup of that. Uh, where's our 40 degrees? You can see we're between, where are we? We're bang on 30 degrees at the moment. So we've got another 10 degrees to go. Okay, here we go. So the pipper will jig about as well, which is horrible. Watching our white needles. Okay, and we're going to recommit our dive try and get down to 40 degrees if we can it's just changing now watch our two whites i don't think we're gonna get steep enough yes we will we will do it we will do it we will do it and i'm gonna pause uh we didn't quite get it did we we're gonna be slightly under here we, we didn't just didn't get quite a steep enough. Maybe we'll give it another go. Uh, but we've one way or another. These are about to coincide because so we're going to drop. So let's see how accurate we can get it. And drop and pull. It might not be that far away. Boom! Direct hit. Okay, that's not bad. So that's not, I don't think it was probably quite where we're aiming for. I think we were trying to aim for this uh, one in the corner here. I can't get my uh, 
uh, screen over and that was because I was about by the feels of it I was about eight degrees off of my 40 degrees there but I got within you know kind of a uh, one about 100 feet of the target and most importantly, it allowed me to pull out safely without putting myself under pressure of the fragmentation there. So that was, I guess what you describe, an okay-ish example of it. Actually doing it, um, which I insist you go and try now, is, uh, is really hard to do. Especially with that sight jumping all over the place because it's constantly... I mean, there's, there is some form of kind of analog computer in here, obviously, to control that sight. And it's, it's jumping about based on various uh, variables. So I guess that's all I've got to show. So go and try it at 10,000 feet, 20,000 feet. Come back to me on how I am 98% sure that the flight manual is actually incorrect. I think once you've tried this, you'll agree with me that this is the only way you can actually get it to work. And another good example of that, if I uh, set it up here, let me quickly get it up to altitude again. So let's say we were going for another bomb run and we were going to go on the same hold pause we're going to say on the same bomb profile again so um, uh, 40 degrees three and a half thousand feet drop so three and a half uh, so I'll set it to three and a half thousand drop there and let's say our target was um, um, I don't know Mount Everest or Ben Nevis or something let's say our guy was on top of a mountain at 10,000 feet well that means um, that the way this system works we will be dropping our bomb once we were six and a half thousand feet inside the mountain um, and that wouldn't work so that's something to bear in mind I don't think there's any controls around here any cage or adjust that I've missed it's literally just that so yeah uh, go and try it see if you can get it more accurate than what I've done I think you'll find it really hard but then again I'm not that good I hope that was interesting because this is a cool bit of history at the end of the day this is pre-CCIP is really interesting stuff um, and uh, catch you later